morning. Good morning. Welcome uh, all to worship today. Uh, this is the uh, 20th Sunday after Pentecost, uh, and uh, also the fourth Sunday of the month. We pray together Divine Service 74. Uh, that's on page 203. Let's go ahead and mark in your hymnals to page 203. Uh, we sing our first hymn, though, uh, 570. But we're also blessed today to have a baptism. So after our first king, we'll have the baptismal party uh, come up as uh, God enlarges this thing. Uh, so again, uh, page 203 in our first team, 570. Matthew, all authority in heaven and in earth has been given to me. 
Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God te also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful until we are under, and are under the power of the devil, until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And how is this child named? Hazel, Elsie May, Bajan, receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. And let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea. Yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Hazel according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in her, which has been inherited from Adam, and which she herself has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, se being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And to our sponsors, from ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing spot sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess their faith, expressed in the Apostles' Creed, and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction, and nurture the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. So is it your intention to serve Hazel as sponsors in the Christian faith? Yes, with the help of God. So God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with His grace, fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that He might touch them. But the disciples rebuked the, those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, He was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to Me, and do not forbid them for of such is the kingdom of God. I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, he put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For this expression of our faith, we pray together the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hazel. Okay. 
cannot answer for herself. We, as her family of faith, answer these questions together with her. So, Hazel, and to all of you gathered here, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce him. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father, Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, I believe. Do you desire this child to be baptized? Hazel, Elsie, may major, and I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all of your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Receive this white garment. To show that you have been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all of your sins. So shall you stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ. To receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which shall have no end. And us, Hazel's family of faith, we welcome her in holy baptism. God has made you a member of his Son our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures in heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ, and together, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who has pulled us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you have graciously preserved and enlarged your family and have granted Hazel the new birth in holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace that according to your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally, with holy of your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. In the name of heaven and earth. If you, O oh Lord, kept a record of sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. And since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As they called and ordained a servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now speak together the introit. The introit is printed on the back of our book. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In the Lord, whose word I praise. In God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? I must perform my vows to you, O God. I will bring many offerings to you. For you have delivered my soul from death, yes, my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. I put my trust in you. We continue on page 204 as we sing, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Almighty and everlasting God, 
You are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and always ready to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour down on us the abundance of your mercy. Forgive us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and give us those things, those good things, for which we are not worthy to ask, except by the merits and the mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson appointed for the day is from the book of Genesis, chapter 4. Now, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have got the man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portion. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and, he, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who found him should attack him. This is the word of the Lord. I said to read from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to the, all who have loved his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn in our hymnal to page 205. Page 205. Please stand as we sing our alleluia. <laughs>
18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, Jesus says, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Now, they were bringing even infants to Jesus, that he might touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. For Jesus called them to, to him, saying, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly really I say to you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child shall not enter it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Have we already confessed our Christian faith in the baptismal service? We continue with our given of the day, 745 and 745.
God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, the Lord our rock, and our redeemer. Praise, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, and from the Lord and the Savior Jesus. Amen. Well, dear friends in Christ, a little factoid for you. There are more clothing stores for dogs than there are for babies in the Metro Washington, D.C. area. Think about that for a moment. For a moment. There is a greater demand for dog sweaters and toys than there is for baby onesies and rattles in our nation's capital. I stumbled on this little tidbit of trivia as I was reading a book about popu population dynamics in our ever-changing world. And the main point of this book is that the majority of very developed countries have a declining birth rate. Many more people are choosing to live without children in our country today. Just think about our community. It's happened here. Can you remember a day when this church was filled, when families had six or seven or eight or more children? Because you see, a hundred years ago, children were free farm workers for the family. And this is also a result of changing in farming, too. See, today, one farmer farms what ten farmers would have farmed a hundred years ago. And today, one farmer may only have two or three children. Now, before I go any farther, I need to say that what I am saying, or what I am not saying, is I'm not saying you all need to have more kids. <laughs> I'm not saying that, because that's not my place to speak. I'm simply noting how things have changed. That book I read also describes the dilemma that many European countries are facing. Countries like Sweden and Norway and the Netherlands. They're actually declining in population. <clears throat> to compound that, the population that they do have is getting older and older. You see, a population grows when families have at least three children. If a family has only two children, those two children simply replace mom and dad in the population. And the population either grows nor declines. If a family has one or no children, then the population declines which is becoming the norm in many heavily, 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 not heavily, heavily urbanized and technologically advanced countries. Now I say all of these things again as a simple statement of fact. But there is an aspect of the nature of our world that is revealed here. The natural, sinful world does not like children. We can see this in the actions of the disciples as people were bringing their children to Jesus. We are seeing this in the decline of developed countries having fewer and fewer children. But think about it. Raising children is hard. Raising children 
is expensive. It currently costs $300,000 to raise a child from birth to age 18. And I have four of them. So do the math. Children take up time. They cause stress and are often ungrateful for what their parents do. And even in nature, the offspring of creatures are what are targeted by predators. They are first to be abandoned when resources get scarce. They often slow their parents down. So it is no wonder why the disciples stopped people from bringing their children to Jesus. They were reacting the natural way in which the world works. They didn't want little grubby hands dirtying Jesus' garments. They didn't want snotty-nosed buggers sneezing in Jesus' face. They didn't want Jesus to have to answer a million silly, trivial questions that kids undoubtedly have. They wanted to keep the peace, keep the kids away, let the grown-ups deal with this situation. Thank you very much. But then they got the big shocker. Their understanding of the world and children in the world was turned up on its head. Jesus says to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. That's not what the disciples expected to hear. Imagine what they were thinking as Jesus spoke those words. They thought, am I a child? Is the kingdom of God not mine also? Don't I have greater faith than that little rug rat running all over? I, I dropped everything to follow Jesus. And that kid just ran through the crowd. How on earth do I receive the kingdom of God like a little child? That, dear friends in Christ, is the main question. And it's our question as well. How do we receive the kingdom of God like a little child? Well, to begin to answer, let's clear up what it doesn't mean to receive it like a child. Number one, it does not mean that we must blindly follow our Christian faith, never questioning, never doubting. The truth is that sometimes we might have questions or doubts. And that's not necessarily wrong or bad. You remember from last Sunday, we all wrestle with God. But here's the thing. If you ever question or doubt something of the Christian faith, it's my job to help you. That's why you called me here five years ago. So call me up, make an appointment, come to my office, and instead of blindly following, we can work together to be informed and understand. Or secondly, what is not like to receive the kingdom of God like a child, receiving like a little child does not mean that it is okay to be completely ignorant of the things of the kingdom of God. We cannot use this passage of the scriptures 
to be lax about our faith. Oh, my faith only has to be good enough as a little child? Huh. Well, that's not too hard. My three-year-old can do that. No, receiving the kingdom of God requires us to use our brains and mental capacities to their fullest and to deeply know and treasure and hold dear the Christian faith. And lastly, receiving the kingdom of God like a child is not like receiving it once Putting it into a piggy bank on the top shelf in our closet, and then moving out of our parents' house when we graduate and go to college and forget about the piggy bank for 30 years, and then wonder what happened. The faith is in everyday occurrence in the lives of children the old alike. It's for us every day of our lives. So those are how not to receive like a little child, but then the question remains, how do we receive the kingdom of God like a little child? Well, Jesus just told us. He just told us in the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector that leads us into him welcoming the children. Remember those two guys praying in the temple? One of them received the kingdom of God like a little child. Y'all know which one it was. It wasn't the Pharisee praying loud and long and making sure everyone hears and sees what he's doing. It was the tax collector. His only prayer being, and we prayed it moments ago, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. The point of the matter is this. We can only receive the kingdom of God like little children because we know we have nothing to give to earn it. There is no action or prayer or magic dance that we can do to earn our place in the kingdom of God. Little children can only receive and cannot give, and that is who you all are. Now, you've heard me say this many times, and I can't help myself but say it again. Children are freeloaders. In my house, my kids know what the word freeloader means. But in the kingdom of God, we're all freeloaders. The kingdom of God looks like receiving what God has to give with no ability to give anything back. And what does God give to those who receive the kingdom of God with faith like a child? Well, he has given his son. Jesus dies for the free forgiveness of sin. And he gives that to us even though we did not earn it, neither do we deserve it. And along with the forgiveness of sins comes everlasting life, comes our mansion prepared for us in heaven, and we receive it all like little children. It makes me think of that one hymn verse that I'll leave you with this morning. 
Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. Amen. And I'm in the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding. Guide our hearts and minds in the one true faith, even in the light of the last day. Amen. We now take a moment to worship our God with our tithes and our own. <coughs> Father, we come to you at the gracious invitation of your Son. May we receive your gifts as little children, that no rebuke of our sinful flesh, the world or the devil, would deter us from turning to you in repentance. Grant us humility to pray, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. As your Son welcomed infants, Give us a deep care for the children entrusted to us, that we would defend their lives even before birth. Instill in parents a desire and commitment to bring their little children to Jesus. Use our Lutheran school, our Sunday school, Bible classes, and youth uh, catechesis to preserve them in the faith. Teach, uh, teach each of us in humility to receive the kingdom of God like a little child. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we praise you that you delivered our souls from death and our feet from falling. Care for those who are near death, preserve them from despair, and give them a confident hope in the resurrection promised for our risen Lord Jesus. Come to the aid of everyone in need, especially those we left up to your care. For Dixie, Tom, Arthur, Jesse, Marilyn, Ethel, Marvin, Pat, Gabe, Jill, Russell, Bill, Rebecca, Cody, and Delaney, and all those we now name silently upon our hearts. Grant them healing according to your will, Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear out. Grant that all who come to the holy altar this day would receive the very body and blood of Jesus in repentance and faith to their abundant blessing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear out. Hear out. Oh Lord, if we if we trust in ourselves for righteousness, we are lost and dead in our sin. Yet you mercifully draw us to yourself in repentance and hear the cries of those who trust in your Son. Grant us humility that we may not exalt ourselves or treat our brothers and sisters with contempt. Rescue us from every evil and bring us into your kingdom as your beloved children. In you alone be glory, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue as we begin the service of the sacrament that begins on page 208. Page 208. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks for grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty, Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
eating of the true body of the Lord Jesus and the drinking of his blood and strengthening and preserving the whole body and soul of the one true faith, even in the life of Christ. Partner in his peace, your sins are free.
11, page 211, please stand.